Apple just released a new watchOS 10, iOS 18, and Mac OS Sequoia. And there are so many implications on how this new software is going to affect diabetes management and the applications we use, whether it be FDA cleared systems like CGMs and pumps that have apps on these devices or the open source community, whether it be DIY Loop or Trio. There are so many new features to these operating systems that everyone can take advantage to, whether it's controlling your iPhone on the Mac screen, setting customized buttons on the control system, Center, live glucose readings on the Apple Watch, and answering Siri with a nod. And I'm going to get into all of these updates that have arrived and what they could mean for diabetes management. Welcome to Diabet Tech. I'm Justin. On here, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management. I've got a podcast that comes on Mondays on YouTube and podcast platforms, as well as YouTube videos like this every Friday or on Fridays. Not every Friday, I'm trying to get there. And on top of that, we have even more on social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, all diabet underscore tech. I've got like four to seven videos releasing on there every week, quick little social clips that get into deep dives of my experience and diabetes tech. So go check all that out, go subscribe. And while you're at it, just subscribe to this channel if you're interested in videos like this. We also have a brand new newsletter. There's a link in the description for that. I've got one coming out all about my takeaways from EASD, a diabetes conference in Madrid. I'm still in Madrid, this is not my home. And I've got a podcast episode with my reflections on EASD, all the tech I saw coming out on Monday. So stay tuned for that. Also, I've got a series idea I want to run by you. I'm thinking I want to do an episode every month that is a roundup of all of the news. If you're interested in that, give this video a like and let me know what you want me to cover in the comments. Also, not all diabetes apps are prepared for the new operating systems. So you do all of this, you update at your own risk. Always consult with a physician before making changes to your healthcare. I personally haven't updated to iOS 18 yet because I'm in Spain and I don't wanna do it here. I'm gonna wait till I get home, but I am gonna do it soon. So I'll keep you posted on any issues I may have. All right, let's get into it. The first big update coming to iPhone is with the control center. The control center is what you swipe down from the top right corner and where you have all of these controls. There is now a controls gallery and these controls are no longer limited to just Apple controls. There is now a third party developer API that allows these developers to create their own controls or action buttons and put them on the control center. Think about this, maybe it's a button that can instantly open up the bolus screen on your pump app, or with the open source apps, maybe it's a button that can instantly turn on an override or take you to that screen right away. And with Omnipop, with activity feature, maybe there's an activity feature button on the control center now. I tap that, it takes me right to the screen, and I turn it on. There are so many implications here, and there's also customization. You can adjust and resize the buttons and controls, Maybe you could even make this like a diabetes control dashboard. There's also now the option to replace the two buttons, the camera and the flashlight buttons on the lock screen with whatever you want. And these can be third party apps too. So maybe it could be like a bolus button and a CGM button or something like that. That would be awesome just to have easy access to open these up because I'm always looking for ways to just quickly do my diabetes thing and then be done. And being able to have buttons like that where I can do that would be Amazing. If anything comes to mind while you're watching this video of features you want to see, let us know in the comments because we need the open source community and the pharma companies to see your comments and then implement these changes. So there's also this new feature, this privacy feature to lock apps. Basically, you can make it so that certain apps are completely hidden from your phone uh, from anyone unless they use Face ID. So you could even have them hidden from search. Now, at first I thought this is pretty cool. It can keep all of your diabetes stuff private, but there are implications here. And specifically, Abbott sent out an email to let their users know of what those would be. Abbott says when the app is locked or hidden, that notifications won't be received. So because of this, they recommend that people don't use the locked or hidden app feature. So this is something I'm gonna test on my own just so I can understand it, but that could be a reason not to do it. And for now, I would say that's probably the decision we should be making. Another feature coming is the ability to schedule text messages. Now, this is great just so you can like send that happy birthday message and not forget because you remembered it the day before and just schedule it for the next day. But even better is you can text yourself ahead of time 
to bolus for a meal that you know you're gonna have as a reminder text, or you know you're gonna work out at 5 p.m., you can schedule a text to send to yourself at 4 p.m. that day to remind you to turn on and override. That way you get you know the insulin cut off a bit. I'm gonna use it like that for sure. I wonder if you can send out texts like in bulk, so you can send out a text like every day at 4 p.m. I doubt it, but that would be pretty cool. Next up is satellite communication. I'm not sure which iPhones that this works with, but basically it allows you to use a satellite for communication when you don't have cellular service or Wi-Fi, and you can send text messages. And I just think of this as like a great option for when you're going really low and you're scared and you don't have service. And you could just get that text out at least so that someone knows what's going on. They know to text you back in case they don't hear from you. And I'm happy to see this. I wonder if there's satellite connection in, in trains, like subway trains, because there's been situations where I don't have low snacks. I'm going low. I'm freaking out a little bit. Luckily, I've been fine. Carry low snacks. There's also a new feature when it comes to AirPods, which is the ability to use nods, yes or no, to respond to Siri. And a way that I think that this could be cool in the diabetes space is if one of your apps says, hey, your glucose is high, would you like to silence this for one hour or something? And you say yes, and then you know the app is silenced for one hour. That's kind of the one feature idea that I have for that. If you have any, let us know in the comments because I'm probably missing something. There are some big changes to the health app. So if you're using open source apps and maybe even some others, they can connect, including Dexcom, they can connect to Apple Health. And this allows you to see your glucose readings over a long period of time. And in some cases, insulin dosage from the health app on Apple. So now you can kind of orient your home screen to look the way you want it to with the most important information to you on the screen. So now you can see your glucose trends and your insulin trends alongside heart rate and other things like that. Now this is where things get even cooler. There's a new vitals app on the Apple Watch. On here you can glance metrics quickly and it will notify you when metrics are out of range. And I wonder if this will activate if it notices your glucose has been higher than normal or your insulin dosage has been higher or lower than normal. I mean, how cool would that be? And it gets better. The app will offer specific factors like alcohol consumption, elevation changes, or illness. We all know that when you have diabetes, illness can really make things more difficult. So what if this Vitals app notices that your glucose levels are staying high longer than normal, and it says, you know, you could be sick? or notices that you're dropping really low often. Are you drinking lots of alcohol? This is cool information that is very real, and I don't know how far Apple's gonna go into that, but I, I understand how far it could. This isn't an FDA clear device, the Apple Watch, um, so I don't know what they're allowed to do, what they're allowed to offer, but also this is a great peek into the future of AI, devices like this, how we can utilize all of this cool information like heart rate and exercise with our glucose and insulin. And hopefully, if it's not Apple doing it, it's other big companies or open source that figure out a way to grab that information from a device like an Apple Watch and utilize it with their data, their algorithm on their app. That was good content. Now, for those of you who are pregnant or thinking about it, there's a new feature on the health app here. Pregnancy will now be shown across all statistics on the health app. It will track cycles and gestational age, and I bet this will be great information to have alongside that insulin dosage and glucose information that is in the health app. Again, if you're using apps that support that. Now, I'm not a woman, I'm also gay, so I have very little experience with women, but if you're a woman, let me know in the comments or let us all know like the implications here. How do you think that this information would be useful? I'm very interested to hear. Now, when it comes to the Apple Watch, which I haven't really been wearing for a year because it was giving me anxiety with glucose levels. Anyway, there are new features coming to SmartStack. So SmartStack comes up when you swipe up from the bottom and it will show you all of the app's latest information, but it now has a smart feature and it will add widgets when needed with cool metrics. Now I wonder, will diabetes apps jump on this train? And I mean pharma because I know that open source apps may already be doing this and apps like Sweet Dreams are doing it. 
But I like the idea of, you know, the top alert on my smart stack is your glucose is low or your pump is not connected. Now I implore anyone who is developing apps in the diabetes space to take advantage of that. It's pretty cool. Now one app that is taking advantage of live activities, which are awesome, is Sweet Dream. So live activities are the ability, you know when you have like an Uber or a Lyft coming or you ordered at Starbucks and like the little screen comes up giving you like a live activity of what is going on with your car uh, and your order second by second. Now there is an app called Sweet Dreams. There are other apps out there doing it. I believe Gluru also has one that give you a live activity on your home screen. I've made videos about it. You should go check them out. And what I like about the Sweet Dreams one is it gives you information on your glucose levels in a nice big way. You can kind of quickly look at it and then put it in your pocket. Love it on dates. Anyway, live activity is coming to the Apple Watch. So now you'll not only have that on your phone, but you'll be able to glance at your watch and see what the status is of whatever that live activity is. Uh, Sweet Dreams already released it. There are a couple screenshots of, of it. I haven't used it yet, because like I said, I haven't updated any of my devices, but I will and I'll let you know how it is. Also keep in mind, I work with Sweet Dreams on some sponsored content, but they didn't tell me to talk about it today. I just, it's, it's cool. One quick thing about iPad, there's a new feature called Share Play, which allows you to have your iPad out and have someone else be video chatting with you and then kind of controlling what's on your screen or even drawing things like arrows. And I just think that this is a good peek at what the future of healthcare or telemedicine could look like. What if you had your iPad out, your doctor, wherever they are in the world, had their iPad out or you know whatever tablet and they're going over reports of your CGM and your insulin and times when you ate and exercise, whatever, and they're able to zoom in, show you specific things, draw arrows. This may already exist in some ways, but the idea of it just being on this one little tablet, like these devices are so helpful in the medical sector. And I wonder if one day your iPad, your Apple Watch, your iPhone will be covered by like insurance. I mean, it kind of should be at this point, or at least you can like spend FSA, HSA money on it. It's a US thing, so don't worry if you're not in the US, but um, could, be, could be cool. So my favorite feature out of anything is one that came to the new Mac OS Sequoia. And this is the ability to see and control your iPhone on a Mac display. The feature is called iPhone mirroring. And I think that this is gonna completely revolutionize management of diabetes at work. Why? Because you can have all of your diabetes apps right on your desktop display as you're in video calls or writing, whatever it may be, you can manage what you need to on the screen. All while your phone is possibly in the other room locked. To open it up, there will be an app in the dock. You just click that and it activates. And what's even cooler is you'll get iPhone notifications and alerts in the top corner of your screen. So if it's a low glucose, whatever, you tap that and then it will, if it wasn't already open, it will open up the iPhone on your screen and you can manage it. You can uh, do what you need to do. It, it is the coolest thing. And then it doesn't stop with diabetes management. I mean, I'm sure there's so many ways in your life that that could be helpful. For me, when it comes to content creation, I'm most excited about being able to have Instagram open on my phone, type out a description, but not just that. I've already been like airdropping things from my iPhone to my computer pretty quickly, but now you can drag an exported movie or picture onto your phone and it, and it, and it just does its thing. I mean, this is crazy. I, I'm pretty excited about this and it's gonna completely change my productivity as a content creator and, and like make it everything faster. That's all I've got for now. If you wanna see me demo all of this using my devices when I'm back in the US, give this video a like. Let me know in the comments if there's anything specifically you want me to like deep, deep dive in. I'm not gonna update till I get home because I wanna be safe. And again, disclaimer, it, I don't know what apps are ready for iOS 18, so please reach out to whether it's your physician or these apps and, and find out if they are. I know, for example, this is crazy, but Omnipod 5's iPhone app, when it comes out next month, is for iOS 17. Um, I don't know if that, maybe that will change and I hope that they will do that because so many people are gonna have new phones and Tandem's already bringing out their app for iOS 18, I believe, so I think they should get ahead. 
anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to this channel for more, go listen to my podcast, it's on podcast platforms, whatever, and follow me on social, diabe underscore tech. That's where you can see like all of these cool videos uh, that are short and a bunch from EASD. Uh, and then also stay tuned for my newsletter and my EASD podcast. I'm Justin and I'll tech you later.